I, I don't ever want to see a day where somebody who is a biological male is competing against my daughter. I would love to win Alexander Volkanovsky is not the champ. That motherfucker is pound for pound best in the world right now. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Inside the Cage, where we bring you the latest and exciting updates of UFC. First, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Fans outrage over Darren Till's viral photo. You know, Darren Till didn't mince his words when he saw all that buzz swirling around a recent photo of him. Surely, he has a very calm personality. Lately, Till found himself in the spotlight on social media through the BJJ Oversimplified Twitter account. The account owner shared a recent gym snapshot of Till and put it side by side with a picture from his UFC days, drawing attention to the differences. At the moment, they claimed they weren't trying to be mean, but then they couldn't resist cracking a joke at Till's expense. Meanwhile, all he wanted was to clear the air and put any doubts to rest about whether he was dealing with a drug problem. So he decided it was time to speak up and set the record straight. He stated, I'm not trying to be mean, but Darren does not look well. This is like a before and after 20 years of hard drugs in Hollywood after being a young star. One fan pointed out that Till likely just got done with an intense gym session, and the tweets are all for nothing. Well, considering that he's dripping in sweat, it's pretty clear he's been through a grueling gym session, Twitter user Cameron McBride wrote. However, Darren Till didn't let the speculation slide, and he fired back at BJJ oversimplified with a clear message. He's doing just fine. It's all good. It was just after a hard session in the gym this morning, Till wrote. This is me about an hour ago after food. Feel like I am not looking bad, to be fair. I read all the comments for once as well, and none of you have a clue. I live a clean life. Injuries are what has been my burden. Darren Till responded to the criticism by taking it in stride and offering a straightforward explanation. In essence, he acknowledged the criticism, but defended himself by attributing any perceived differences to the timing of the photo and his commitment to a healthy lifestyle. A timely response, for sure. The internet erupts over Dana White's transgender announcement. Here, the discussion surrounding transgender athletes in women's sports has been quite a hot topic on the ethics of sports. As you know, Dana White, who's been a prominent figure in combat sports for well over two decades, recently shared his thoughts on this issue. In a conversation earlier this month, White used a personal example, his daughter, to explain why he believes individuals who were born as males but transitioned to females shouldn't be allowed to compete in women's sports, at least in his view. I think you know exactly what I think of that. I, I think do. that, you know, <laughs> let, me, let me put it to you this way. I have a daughter, okay, and... and uh, you know, I, I don't ever want to see a day where somebody who is a biological male is competing against my daughter. So, yeah, no, I, I think it's, uh, it's, another, it's another nutty, you know, insane thing that's happening in the world today, you know, that we're all trying to deal with. And, uh, yeah, I'm, ju I'm just glad there's no – some. my daughter's a cheerleader. So she's not playing any competitive sports, but, uh, you know, it hasn't happened in the cheer, in the cheer world yet. It's not shocking to hear that Dana White holds these views. He's been pretty vocal about his opinions in the past. Remember, Trump has also been quite outspoken against transgender athletes competing in women's sports. Not too long ago, Trump even went on record saying he'd ban men from participating in women's sports. So, White's stance lines up with that perspective. Sean O'Malley's controversial stand for Alexander Volkanovsky. Lately, Sean O'Malley has been making headlines for talking about Alexander Volkanovsky, but it's not because he's itching for a fight with him. That is why he leaves a big question on some people's minds whether he might be eyeing a move up to a higher weight class to go after a second belt. But it doesn't look like that's high up on his to-do list. Instead, Sean O'Malley recently teamed up with Juan Gonzalez's That Was Epic web show for a pretty cool venture. They were out and about in his home city in Arizona, handing out cash and prizes to random people. While they were filming, Suga took a moment to chat about his fighting career, what it's like to hold a UFC championship, and what his plans might involve. I would love to win Alexander Volkanovsky is not the champ. That motherfucker is pound for pound best in the world right now. You know, Sean O'Malley seems to be sticking to his guns when it comes to this whole Alexander Volkanovsky thing. Just last month on his Timbo Sugar Show podcast, he told his coach Tim Welch to chill out and be realistic about the whole situation. 
And in a more recent podcast episode, he's driving home the same point yet again. That's just not a fight he's itching for, even if he believes he's got a shot at winning it. I wouldn't say that. I mean, I'm confident I can knock anyone out. I feel like I can definitely knock Alexander Volkanovsky out. It would be very, very difficult. I mean, maybe in a year or two, if he's still there, I, I would do it. But I think he's going to move up to 155. So it depends who's champ. It's funny how this whole Sean O'Malley and Alexander Volkanovsky situation seems to be shaping up. If you ask Sean O'Malley, he's got nothing but good things to say about Volkanovsky, and it looks like there's a mutual appreciation club in the making. Guys, if you're enjoying the video, we'd love your support. Just hit that subscribe button to motivate us to bring you more exciting content. Dana White's Game-Changing Strategy to Dominate Mexico Independence Day Once again, the UFC has big plans to go head-to-head -head with boxing on Mexican Independence Day year after year. Just this past Saturday night, they hosted their inaugural Noche UFC event, and man, it did make a statement. The main event featured a title clash between Alexa Grasso and Valentina Shevchenko, and it was nothing short of a huge success. Eventually, Dana White was all smiles as he revealed some impressive stats. After that, he mentioned that Noche became the most-watched UFC fight night on ESPN Plus in history, boasting a huge 1.1 million unique views. And that's not all. The event racked up an astonishing 167 million total minutes of watch time on the app. He said, I, I will go that date every day. I don't care if somebody here in town gets the date at the arena. I'll go in an opposing arena and go head to head with them next year. I'm doing this for the rest of my reign here. So they can go on the same night. We can go head to head. I'm going. Now, here's the main point. Even though Mexican Independence Day is usually dubbed Canelo Day in the boxing world, Dana White has some ambitious plans. Although he wants to keep the UFC flag flying high on that date, making it an annual tradition. So, it seems like the UFC is ready to give boxing a run for its money on this significant day. Tyson Fury's words about Tom Aspinall. Lastly, Tyson Fury's got quite the prediction up his sleeve when it comes to UFC heavyweight champ John Jones. He's got his money on his fellow Brit. Tom Aspinall, if anyone's going to take down Jones. Whereas Aspinall is even stepping into Fury's corner, helping him prepare for his upcoming boxing showdown against Francis Ngannou. I'm bringing him in as a sparring partner in preparation for a UFC champion, Fury told TNT Sports. He's a good fighter, probably could have made it as a pro boxer. I was quite sure he would have gone on and won a world championship, but he had a derailment with his knee, and that fell out. Now he's had his comeback trail. I think he can do it. He's big enough. He's got the power. He's a black belt in jujitsu. See, it's quite an interesting twist in Tom Aspinall's career path. Despite Tyson Fury's belief that Aspinall could make waves in the boxing world, Aspinall has been carving out quite a name for himself in MMA. Currently, Aspinall has firmly planted himself in the title conversation, and he's not shy about expressing his desire to face none other than John Jones. But again, here is a twist. Tyson Fury isn't quite ready to count Jones out. He's betting on Jones to win his upcoming bout against Stipe Miocic with ease. However, Fury also thinks that Aspinall might just be the only person out there who could potentially give Jones a run for his money. A real MMA puzzle for sure. It's a tough one. John Jones is the Tyson Fury of boxing. People are unable to beat him. Very tough one, Fury said. Even though Tom Aspinall's a mate, John Jones is probably considered the greatest of all time in MMA, so I don't know. It's probably like, can anyone beat Vladimir Klitschko before Tyson Fury beat him? Probably not, but then Tyson Fury beat him. So if anyone can beat John Jones, it'll be Tom Aspinall. Nobody else. Now there's a cloud of uncertainty hanging over Jones's future in the sport. Some fight enthusiasts are speculating that Bones might hang up his gloves for good after his showdown with Stipe Miocic. So let's wait to see which way Jones will go next. All right, guys, that's all for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. See you at the next one. Until then, goodbye.